Greetings. Welcome to our episode 14 of uh, our quarantine devotion. And uh, we are working our way through the uh, Gospel of John. And today we're on chapter 4, which describes the conversation that Jesus had with a woman at the well. There is a plant in, in South America which finds a moist place and rests there for a while sending its roots down and turning green. And when this bit of earth dries up, the plant draws itself together and is blown along by the wind until it finds another moist spot where it repeats the same process. And on and on it rolls, stopping wherever it finds a little water and staying put until the water is no more. And after all its journeys, it is nothing but a bundle of dead roots and leaves. This plant, or the life of this plant, tells the story of those who drink at the world's springs. We go from well to well, and at last, at the end of the longest life, we are nothing but bundles of unsatisfied desires. In this quarantine devotion, we learn, or sorry, in the last quarantine devotion or a previous one, we learned that the Spirit blows where it wills. And here the wind of the Spirit led Jesus into Samaria. And while he was in Jerusalem, he spoke with a moral Jewish man, Nicodemus. And while in Samaria, he speaks with an immoral Samaritan woman. In Jerusalem, Jesus had something to say to the religious establishment. But in Samaria, he had something to say to those despised by the religious establishment. So let's read a few verses here in John chapter 4. We're going to do seven verses 7 and 9. It says, And there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me to drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Well, who is this Samaritan woman? John does not give us her name, and this may be because she stands for a typical person, concerned with satisfying physical needs. Now, there were close to wells she could have gone to, Jacob's well was not the closest water source from a hometown. And she went at the hottest time of the day. In fact, if we go to verse 6, it says that, uh, that um, <clears throat> Jesus, wearied, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, and the sixth hour is noon. So she went at the hottest time of the day. Why didn't she go when it was cooler, like early morning, or late afternoon. The third thing that we notice about the Samaritan woman is that she was alone. When drawing water from wells, women usually went in groups. But maybe due to her checkered past, her poor reputation, her sense of shame, she wanted to avoid human contact. Now this woman's knowledge of Jesus grew in steps until at last she grasped that Jesus was the Messiah. The first step was that she recognized Jesus as a Jew. And then she learned that he was greater than Jacob. And after that, she saw that he was a prophet, and finally she acknowledged him to be the Messiah. Well, the next two, the last two ones, that recognizing him as a prophet and as the Messiah, we'll cover in our next quarantine devotion. We're going to look at how she discovered that he was a Jew and then greater than Jacob. Well, let's look at the first one. Jesus was a Jew. How did she know that? Well, she knew that because Jesus had these things, these tassels in Hebrew called tzitzit hanging from his garment, and they served to identify him as a Jew. For example, if we go to, to Numbers chapter 15, and here we, we read about the commandment to wear these tzitzit, to wear these tassels, in, in, in Numbers 15, verses 38 to 39, it says, Speak to the sons of Israel and tell them that they shall make for themselves tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and they shall put on the tassel of each corner of a cord of blue. And it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord so as to do them and not 
follow after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you plague the harlots. And so these tassels were a reminder of the commandments. And her hidden response to Jesus may have been one of resentment because of the historic dislike between Samaritans and Jews. Well, why the dislike? Well, let's do a little bit of a history lesson here. When the, when the Assyrians conquered the northern tribes of Israel 722 years before the time of Jesus, they took many Jews captive and scattered them across the whole Assyrian Empire. But a remnant was left behind. And to replace the exiled Jewish population, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and other peoples of the region occupied the land, brought their pagan worship practices with them, and married the remnant Jewish population left behind. And the children of these intermarriages are the Samaritans. Given this tragic history, there was resentment on the part of the Jewish people toward the Samaritans. And three invisible walls stood be between Jesus and this woman. The first wall was the religious wall. The, Sar the Samaritans had their own temple, they had their own priesthood, they had their own sacrificial system, but to a religious Jew offering sacrifices to God outside of Jerusalem and outside of the Jerusalem temple without a Levitical priesthood, well, that was not kosher. And so there, there was a religious wall. And the second one, there was the racial wall. According to religious traditions, Jews viewed Samaritans as unclean due to their apostate practices or worship practices. It would not be kosher to eat with Samaritan utensils and vessels. And so for Jesus to drink out of this woman's water would have made him ceremonially unclean according to the traditions, not necessarily according to biblical Judaism. And the third wall was the gender wall. It was not right for a Jewish man to speak in public to a foreign woman, especially one of poor reputation. So Jesus ignored these barriers so that he could have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with this woman. You know, if a house were burning down, a firefighter doesn't go, doesn't, uh, doesn't say to the people inside, come out of the house before it burns down and I will rescue you. Of course he doesn't do that. He goes into the burning house to rescue those inside. And so here the Samaritan woman didn't go to Jesus. Jesus went to the Samaritan woman. And we have the greatest news ever as Christians. Should we not look for opportunities to go to our neighbor and share this good news? But in order to do this, we will have to break through some invisible barriers as Jesus had to break through those three barriers we just talked about. As a result of her encounter with Jesus, the Samaritan's knowledge of him grew step by step until she finally realized he was the Messiah. First, as we looked at, she recognized him to be a Jew. Now, she's learning that he is even greater than Jacob. Let's go to verses 10 to 12. Let's look at those verses, 10 to 15, sorry. It says here, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us uh, the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Then the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw. <clears throat> this woman failed to grasp Jesus' words about living water. Deep down, every one of us is unhappy about something, and often we don't know why. Every one of us has a God-shaped vacuum which nothing in this world can completely fill. We are not able to quench the thirst of our soul with what the world has to offer. Not profit, not pleasure, not power, not prestige, not fame, not fortune, not love, not lust. These springs at which we stop to drink cause us to thirst again. There's an interesting verse in, in Jeremiah chapter 2. 
Let's look at that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. And back in, in, uh, in John 4 and verse 13, the verb drinks is in the present tense, which suggests continuous action. We come back again and again to drink from the world's wells and are never fully satisfied. Now the Samaritan woman was thinking about a deep hole in the ground, but Jesus was talking about a bubbling spring in the heart. In verse 14, the verb springing up is in the present tense. And this verb suggests that the water Jesus gives is living. It is bubbling up in endless supply. The blessing of this endless fountain of living water is the Spirit of God, which the Lord gives in response to our repentance from sin and our faith in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 12, verse 3 tells us this. It says in, in, in verse 3 of Isaiah 12, Therefore you will joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. Perhaps Jesus was referring to this passage in Isaiah in his dialogue with the Samaritan woman. The endless supply of his spirit results in new life. It results in a new power. It results in a new direction. The living water leads to eternal life, which does not begin when we die, but when we believe. In John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus gave a definition for eternal life. And he said eternal life is to know God and Christ Jesus whom he has sent. In verse 14 of John 4, there's a verb that said the, the phrase whoever drinks, that word that verb drinks is in the past tense. This is different than the other drink. This is whoever drinks of the living water. It's a one-time action. Once we drink from the living water, we enter a reality from which we will never want to leave. The verb is also in the active voice, which means that it is an act of our will. We have to drink of the living water. No one can drink for us. And notice the word whoever, whoever drinks, anyone can drink of this living water. And then also the phrase, I will give. If God put a price tag on this living water, no one could afford it. Nor could anyone work for it. The only option is to receive this living water as a free gift from God. So in conclusion, what well are you drinking from? Are you drinking from the well of this world which never satisfies? We will have to keep going back to that well over and over again. Or are you drinking from the well of living water which bubbles up into eternal life? And if you have drunk of this living water, are you willing to overcome the invisible barriers to share this living water with others. Well, I hope you uh, got something out of this quarantine devotion, and we're going to do other ones in the, in the days ahead. Until then, may God bless you.